What's going on guys? John Alder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, we're going to look at bar charts with Matplotlib, Pandas, and Python. Alright guys, like I said in this video, we're going to look at bar charts with Pandas, but very quick announcement before we get started, there's still two days left to get my ChatGPT Django course over at CodingMe.com for a massive, massive discount. If you're not familiar, I created this Django bot, we can ask it questions. I'm a vegan, suggest lunch. Hit enter. Lunch options include veggie wrap. Before that, I asked, hey, what are 10 fun things to do outside in Vegas today? It gives me a list of that. All the cool things. You guys are familiar with ChatGPT already. Also in this course, we've got database stuff. So we're going to save all of our questions and answers to a database, get all this up and running in Django. It's really cool. I announced this last week in a video. I'll put a link up there if you want to watch it in more depth. But for the next two days, you can come to codemy.com, come down here. Now this course is $49 just for the course itself, or we've got this special offer where I'm knocking $200 off lifetime membership, where you get all of my courses, including that Django chat GBT course uh, for just $49. So come in here, click on total lifetime membership, and then just type in chat GPT for the next two days. And boom, you can get all my courses for just $49. It's a one-time fee. It's not monthly. It's not yearly. It's not annually. It's not anything. Just one time you get all my courses over 50 courses, thousands of videos, and all my future courses as well at no additional charge. They just pop up in your account every time I release them. And we've got an aggressive filming schedule for this year. Hopefully we're going to have 30 to 40 new courses if everything goes right that will just pop up in your account as they come live. So check that out if you're interested. Like I said, that coupon code is good for the next two days. So in this video, we're going to look at bar charts. So, you know, basic bar graphs, bar charts, bar plots, whatever you want to call them using pandas and matplotlib. So let's come up here to the top. I've got a file called bar underscore chart. As always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this pandas series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So we start out with our same starter code we've been working on. I've got this sort of fake data, just 25 sets of random numbers. We've got four columns, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We've imported pandas, numpy, and this matplotlib inline thing, which allows us to have graphs and charts in our Jupyter notebook. And you also have to, of course, pip install each of these things, pandas, numpy, and matplotlib. So I'm assuming you're up to speed on all that. If not, check the playlist. I've gone through all this in great detail in the past. So let's come down here. In this video, I'm going to show you two different ways to do bar charts and some things you could do with them. So let's jump right in. First off, let's just create a bar chart. So I call them bar charts. Maybe they're bar graphs to you. Maybe they're bar plots to you. All the same thing. So let's go my underscore df, which is the name of our data frame up here, right? And then dot plot. And we want to set the kind to bar. Now, if we run this, you see we've got positive and negative values here. So maybe you want that, maybe you don't. We looked in the last video, we can just call the dot absolute function on this to convert all of our numbers to absolute values. And then we get nothing but positive numbers here. So that's pretty cool. Now, this has each column with a separate bar. And okay, maybe that's what you want, but it's yeah, kind of hard to read. Everything's kind of scrunched together. You know, they're very skinny. We can do this stacked. So let me just copy this whole guy right here. And let's come over here and we could just set stacked to true. When we do that, boom, they're all stacked, much easier to read, I think, and very cool. We can also go, you know, grid equals true. If we want actual grid lines on there, that kind of gives me a headache. So I'm just going to take that off. So but you know, keep that in mind. If you like that, we can also do shading. We looked at shading in the last video for the area plot, we can do the same thing here. So we can go alpha equals and then set a value. So 0 0.4, the closer it is to zero, the lighter it's going to get, right? So you see, we've, seen, we've got some shading. If we do 0.1, you know, you can barely see it. Or we could go up to, you know, 0.9. And it's basically the same as regular. So we can do shading. That's cool. Let me copy this guy again. And we can add a title. We I've looked at titles in the past, my awesome bar chart. And we get this little title that says my awesome bar chart. Eh, kind of cool. We can have a legend or not. So here's the legend right here. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday shows the different colors. In this instance, I would keep the legend because it's useful, right? Uh, but if you didn't want to have it for whatever reason, boom, you can take it off. Just add legend equals false. And our little legend thing is gone. I'm going to keep it on there because I kind of like it. <laughs> right? So. That's the first way to do it. And honestly, that's the way I use and sort of the way I kind of recommend because there's lots of charts and graphs you can use and they all work with that method by calling the dot plot and then setting the kind equal to whatever chart or graph you want. So in the last video, we looked at area plots. It was essentially the same thing. We just typed in area instead of bar. In fact, if I do that, boom, we get an area graph just like that, right? So, you know, that's sort of a standard way to do it. The other way is to call 
my underscore df. And again, we want the dot absolute value of this. And we could just call dot plot dot bar. And we get the same thing. So instead of setting dot plot and then inside of here, you know, designating the kind of bar, we can just call the dot bar function on our plot function, right? So some graphs you can do this, some graphs you can't. That's why I just recommend maybe not doing it this way. But if you want to do it this way for some strange reason, and you might have some strange reason, I don't know, you could do the exact same thing. We can set stacked equal to true. And boom, we got that. We can equally, you know, set the shading to 0 0.4. And we get some shading. And same thing here, we could set the title in the same way. My bodacious bar chart. <laughs> I don't know. Is bodacious a word still? What does bodacious mean? I have to ask chat GPT. I don't remember. <laughs> All right, we could also set uh, the legend again, same way equals to false. And then we don't have a legend. And likewise, we can add grid lines to this in the same way, just set grid equal to true. There you go. So either way you want to do this, it works the same way. But uh, like I said, most of the time, I'll just put the kind equals bar inside the plot function, just because I don't want to keep track of which graphs you can do that or not do that with. So I just do it that way and you're covered on all your bases. And that's all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code ChatGPT for the next two days only to get $200 off lifetime total membership. So it's access to all my courses, over 50 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students, learn to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.